All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to the Great Southern Billiard Tour. Here at Fast Eddie's in Goldsboro, North Carolina. I'm David King, along with Alvin Nelson. We're gonna be doing a match today. It's the hot seat match between Danny Mastermaker and Mike Stobbs. It's gonna be an even race to nine games. Danny Doom. So Danny Mastermaker is from uh, Richmond, Virginia, uh, or surrounding area, I should say. Uh, very accomplished uh, young player, plays well. Quite a sporty little player he is. And, uh, Mike Stobbs is from the uh, Charleston, South Carolina area. Good no friend. joke. Guys, no joke. No joke at all. And I think you'll see that in this match. Whenever you want. See uh, Danny's opening break. He usually makes the wing ball real good almost every time. Does the cut break. Yep, there it went. It's having the same issue I was having with the cue ball. Uh, Moving up table. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That comes from jumping up a little bit. Is that what it is? Yes. Been having a good time here in Goldsboro, Dave. It's been a blast. Commentating with you and hanging out. It's been almost too much fun. <laughs> JR as well, joining us. Make it all happen. We'll get confirmation about the uh, brake speed contest, if it's going on or not. Well, that brake speed was 22.23 miles per hour. Mike Stobbs is going to shoot this ball in the same corner pocket that he's going to shoot the three in. So, nice shot there. Just roll forward a little bit for the four. Would have bumped off the nine the whole position. I don't think he had to do that. He's going to hit the six ball and snooker himself. Uh, So, Sam got knocked out of the tournament, right? Yes, Sam is uh, out of the tournament. It's kind of unfortunate you guys drew each other, but. Uh, we just happened to meet up on the one loss side. Things happened. Well, wow, Danny just. Uh, sure did. Uncharacteristic. Just jumped up. Yeah, I think Danny's boat shoes failed him that time. Got those boat shoes on. Cue there. Well, Danny has to feel quite fortunate to be back at the table. Absolutely. We have uh, Danny's good friend uh, Chris Bruner out in the uh, chat room. 
being ornery as usual. <laughs> he does some commentary with us at these Southern shows. Chris is a great guy. I like him. I, like him I really expected him to be here today. Uh, he had a few other things uh, occupying him, a little action. You know. It's fun to bring the uh, chat members into the commentary. It's an interactive thing, these chats. I mean, we're going to get a break speed here from uh, Mike Stobbs. Uh, Danny Mastermaker uh, leads the match, uh, one game to zero. say about I'm gonna guess about 20 miles per hour 20.1 miles per hour here comes the uh, guesses from the chat members And it's airborne time. 20.63 miles per hour. And he's going for a very interesting shot here. He's going to tuck himself up behind the three ball. I think he wanted to be closer to the three there, but he's looked a very difficult. He sure uh, has on the one here. Yeah, it's really tough to hit the ball. Yeah. Yeah, you had to actually go before the side pocket there. Thank the Great Southern Billiard Tour for uh, having us here. And if you're just joining us, we're at uh, Fast Eddie's in Goldsboro, North Carolina, watching a match between Danny Mastermaker and Mike Sobs. Now, what side is this? Right, the uh, winner side, or this is the hot seat match. Okay. loser of this match will play the winner of the Mike Fuller uh, Mac Harrell match. 
Yeah, and we're going to try to hold Shannon Dalton to uh, commentating on the final match. He said he would do the semis and the finals. So that should be interesting. Stay tuned for that. Get to hear Shannon's commentary. One of the world's best players. Absolutely. And we'll probably be yourself and me. We'll probably have a three-man and maybe get JR to comment, and we'll we'll have you with the mic and running around doing little interviews here and there. Sounds great. Should be pretty fun. So everybody stay tuned for that. But here during this match, we're going to be watching Mike Stobbs. I just have this feeling we're going to be seeing a lot of Mike Stobbs. <laughs> I really do. Well, he's not proving anything different to me. So I'll have to agree with you there. Very nice shot. Very nice shot there. Draw back out one rail. Do one of two things. Put the nine in the side, which I like. Just like that. Oh, looks like your friend's going to go play some pool. Oh, no, that's not. Never mind. I'm going to answer a question out there on the chat right now. Uh, what is a hot seat match all about? Okay, the hot seat match is uh, also referred to as the king of the hill match. The winner of this match is automatically in the finals with the loser having to play in the semifinals. It's basically as far ahead in the winner side bracket as you can go before you win. Danny's been playing real nice this tournament. Twenty three point five miles per hour. Or I'm sorry, point zero five miles per hour. Twenty three point zero five miles per hour. Now look at him. He's going to go ahead and sh try to shoot this two ball. He did a nice job there, but he let now the cue ball, the one ball is going to. He just does he get lucky or not. And yeah, I don't know about that shot he just played. I think I would have tried to play a safety on the one ball or something. Too easy to lose the one ball. He's got a cut in the lower left-hand corner there. Although it's a pretty difficult cut, I would say. No, he went ahead and played the smart shot. Well, didn't, it's not going to turn out good for him. That's not going to turn out good, even though he's up on the, you know, he is up on the rail. He is up on the rail. Did the best he could. He made a good hit. Did the best he could for sure. That's a tough shot to make. 
on the rail like that. See if Danny can smooth out. Get into some kind of. Uh, Let me get you a score update out there. Our score is one to one. Want y'all to visit InsidePoolMag.com. Check out the online free version of the magazine. And also there is a premium version of the magazine where you get the entire magazine for the entire year for $9.99, I believe. Also want to thank the CutShot.com and PoolPlayerExcuses.com, two supporting websites. That was a nice shot there by Danny. He sort of just stunned the cue ball a little bit. I can draw right back up table for the eight. shot there. Wasn't quite sure why he jacked up on that. I would have selected to roll it, but all in all, it worked out for him. There it is. And our score is going to be two games to one in favor of uh, Danny Mastermaker. And you see Alvin, he's starting to get, he's starting to feel confident. Anytime you can jack off the rail like that. Jack up off the rail. Right. Sounded kind of bad there. Uh, and start shooting like that, it's it's a confidence booster. It really lets you stroke out and just, especially when you stay in line like he did. There was no reason for him, you know. Great, great power shot there. Let's see what he's gonna do in the break. You played the best shot of the entire tournament, uh, Dave, a couple nights ago. Played a three rail kick shot and pocketed the ball convincingly and made shape on your next ball. So, you know. Our brake speed was 22.32 uh, miles per hour. Uh, I do remember that shot, Alvin. Uh, Great Thank shot. you for the compliment on that. Uh, that was I was awesome actually shot. on two fouls at that point in time, and I had to I had to come with something. Uh, I was pinned, and I was able to uh, come up with a shot, and uh, I was lucky I actually made the ball and came up with position and was able to complete the rack. Sure did. Actually, the man that put me in that position is uh, sitting right behind me, uh, Mr. Rodney Strickland. Yeah, you and him played the first uh, match of the mini tournament that you did, the first round, right? Or no, it was no, we played uh, deep, pretty deep into the yeah, tournament. Yeah, that's right, that's right. It's all a blur. I've, you know, I've just had so many matches going on, and I'll tell you what, on table two here in front of us, looks like Mike Fuller is just having his way with uh, Mac Carroll. Mike Fuller's a nice player. Yes, he is. He's a great player. And an excellent gentleman at that. Yeah. One of the nicest guys you will ever meet.
Rodney Strickland sitting behind me uh, just informed me he lost to uh, both of these players uh, on table two, uh, Mike Fuller and Mac Harrell, uh, Hill Hill. Looks like uh, Danny's going to go ahead and manipulate this rack as well. And after he uh, pockets this nine ball, the score is going to be uh, three games to one. Okay, we're back. Three games to one. In favor of Danny Mastermaker with Danny's break. Control of the cue ball. We're going to be joined with uh, by a pretty sporty player, Rodney Strickland. He's going to sit in with David and I and help out with the commentary here. Great. The hot seat match. Great to be here, guys. It's a pleasure to have you, Rodney. Yeah, I heard y'all talking earlier about. Mike flying, flying a little low on the radar. I've been playing against Mike for about 15 years in tournaments here and there. He's a great, great bar table player and plays pretty sporty on the he is, huh? on the uh, big tables. But uh, you'll see him going for a lot of shots uh, instead of playing safe, just that bar table mentality. Right, right. Go for it. I love just that. Just let you put. I love Our offense, break man. It's 24.86 miles per hour by uh, Danny Mastermaker. I know, it's fun. Uh, par table eight ball is just an offensive game. and But you got to know when to hold them, too. Yeah, he got a little jumpy on that. Yeah, the pockets are a little big, but they play a little deceptive. Uh, that won't rattle in. They'll, they'll spit them back out yes, if you don't hit them good. Just because they're a wide opening doesn't mean uh, that it's going to take every ball to shoot at it. They're asking out in the chat, uh, Barrier is, if, Ronnie, are you related to Earl Strickland? We already asked this question earlier, but. Uh, no, I'm not. But uh, if he can somehow give me that natural stroke of his, I would gladly receive that. <laughs> Uh, he rattled that ball. See, uh, these, these, this pocket in particular here has been rattling. Yeah, 
Yeah, I expect this to turn to a, a great match here. Uh, Stobbs, he's, he's a fighter. He's got a lot of heart. Uh, I don't I don't know that much about Danny. I haven't seen him but a few times, so I'm not very familiar with his game. I've seen him play in a couple tournaments here and there, and he's definitely improving for sure. Well, obviously, he's not playing bad to be in the finals of the winner's break. Absolutely. Mike Stobbs is going to have an unusual nine ball shot, but go ahead and pop this one in the side, I'm sure. Well, that stems a lot from his bar table play. Uh, being a bar table player, that they play a, a little different position than uh, you're not people to play just on nine foot tables. Very interesting observation there. All right, I'm David King, back with you now. Uh, my uh, row partner had a little something he had to say to me. Uh, he's actually going to be uh, matching up with uh, Larry Crisell, playing uh, a little bit of even one pocket. I thought we were doing a ring game. I think the ring game was uh, canceled. Uh, uh -huh. Not enough players. Uh, we may have took too long, too. On well, we were all having a good time last night, and I don't think anybody oh, wanted to having a good time. jump on in there and focus on playing pool. I know I was uh, hitting the balls quite well last night, and I really would have liked to have played in it, but I was also going to be commentating on it, so it didn't hurt my feelings either way. I really like uh, fast eddies. I do, too. I have a good time here, man. It's I'm respected here very well. I come here quite often, so I mean, never, all the employees here, they, they, they treat me really good. They really welcome uh, people from out of town. They know how to do that. And yeah, they're, they're, they're super cool here. Ball deposited. Uh, I don't like what's going on here. No, um, you know, it could have been, could maybe ducked a little bit on it too, but like I said, I think that's that barter table mentality, try to run out from wherever. Um, hmm. You know, that they just tend, tend to play a little more aggressive. Well, I'm learning. I think it might duck this here behind at seven. I would play some sort of safety here. I think he hit on a little too full in the face there. Mm -hmm. Kind of getting in his head a little bit, I think. And now Danny's probably just going to thin it and come around and try to get behind the nine. I uh, hit down a little too hard, too. His tables are playing fast. They sure are. I was playing on it earlier a little bit. and. That ball was rolling so far. David would know um, as well how it's changing. So it, uh, wow, he did, he failed to even contact that ball. Uh, it played a fairly quick uh, Friday night after it started to heat up a little bit. Last night it was playing like grease lightning. <laughs> I think the, the weather's warming up a little bit. The table's getting a little damp, like Sam was talking about earlier, exactly. slowing down the balls. Yep. Let's see what happens when it gets damp like that. The cloth gets slow and the rails get live. And it's hard to adjust to which is going to do what. And that, that, that favors kind of your higher ranked players too. Yes, it does. Because they can adjust more quickly to the table than the people that aren't playing quite as much. And they think it's all in their stroke and their play. And it's really not. It's just the fact of they don't know to adapt to it. Exactly, and then they start questioning their stroke and come up, start coming up a little short on shots. When you start questioning your stroke mid-match, uh, you really have a problem. That's, oh, yeah. that's not a good thing to do.
Nice shot there by Danny. Just sort of rolled that in with a little bottom left. And there Nicely you have played it. Nine ball. That's going to make our score four games to two in favor of uh, Danny Mastermaker. Place your bets on the brake speed. Be winning a free one year subscription to Inside Pool Magazine. If you are 0.2 closest without going over. Pop that wing ball again. Got a Let's second a ball. Bright there. Sure was. Look Got at that. One ball holds. It's perfect. That's the exact same break he used a while ago, except he let his cue ball get away from him. Right. Rolled right up in that pocket where the one ball's at. He always breaks exactly the same. And what's everybody like here? Uh, one rail, two rails. I like two rails. Yeah. Just like this. Come at the ball. Exactly. If you're, uh, shooting. State, don't let me cross your line. Then. Right, exactly. If you come one rail there, you're crossing your line. Uh, and then you can just force right over for the three ball. Just like that. Perfect angle to come up table for the four. On the top slide of the it right out. pocket. Get you a good angle on the four and just ABC from here. And our brake speed right there was 23.74 miles per hour. Just so let all you viewers out there know. Draw right over to the side rail, back out, just like that. And he's falling a little bit straight on this ball. Yeah, he might even be a little bit on the on the wrong side of it too. Right. He, either way, I, I you're gonna have to draw this ball back. Either take the harder of the cut shots, or you can draw it all the way back to the end rail and back down, which is risky. Uh, just go ahead and draw it back. About look at that miscue! Wow, he, how unfortunate he, for him. After such an amazing break, he was uh, he was going for the whammy there. He was actually going to try to snatch that cue ball back to the end rail and back down a little bit. That's why you gotta you gotta look at your equipment more often during the match. Right. Absolutely correct. Attend to your tips. Speaking of tips, uh, one of the uh, sponsors of this uh, tour, Great Southern Billiard Tour, is uh, Tiger Products, which. Uh, I'm now uh, going to be doing a little bit of endorsing for. I'm trying out their new tip, uh, the Onyx, that I had put on my queue, uh, which was uh, Saturday. Now, how do you like that compared to well, – what were you playing with before that? I was playing with a Tiger Everest. Uh, that's usually what comes on most uh, Predator shafts. Uh, that's your sponsor, by the way. Everybody knows that I am sponsored by uh, Predator Products. I'm a player rep for uh, – their cues. Predator does great things for pool. Yes, they do. We appreciate them. Um, I was playing with an Everest, which is a layered tip, medium, uh, and hardness. Uh, I didn't. I, I like the tip. Don't get me wrong, but uh, the Onyx from Tiger. Yeah, how, how, does, how, how does the Onyx compare well, to that? The Onyx is a black tip, a black layer tip, kind of like the Kamui. Uh, it's actually a little bit softer than the Everest, uh, but it's not as soft as, say, a Kamui Super Soft or a Kamui Soft. It's still, But it has great feel, and it grips the cue ball. It probably got, holds chalk a little better, too, then. Holds chalk excellent. Uh, you can actually feel it compress the cue ball when you hit it and just grips it and gives it that just solid feel and 
excessive amount of English that he puts on the ball as well. It took me a little bit to get used to it. Uh, you should never change a tip uh, in the middle of, uh, well, right before you start a tournament. But could be why I uh, started Unless you get some playing time with it. But uh, I'll tell you what, I am very happy with it. And, uh, for all you uh, players out there that are fans of uh, the layered tip, which uh, most uh, cues come with these days, uh, go ahead and give uh, Tiger Products that a look. Uh, try the uh, Onyx tip out. Not that it's not an excessively expensive tip, you know, roughly uh, anywhere from 30 to $45, depending on who's putting it on, which is about average and that for your higher-end layered tips. Look at this nine ball go. Wow, it was a great shot. Carried it off to one and just rolled it down from nine. A little two-way, too. Hit it behind the uh, pack there. Very, very, very lucky. Well, that's going to tie this match up at four games each. And, uh... Sure is. We're starting to get a barn burner brewing. That's, yeah, I, uh, I think it's going to be a great match here. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys uh, showing up, doing the commentary with me. I'm uh, with David King and Rodney Strickland. I appreciate you having me. Two great players. And J.R. Calvert's doing the break speed here for the contest. Had a couple winners today already. A couple winners of the subscription. One guy. guess around 24 6. Mm. Uh, it took a little Something bit went off funny those. there. He made the one, fortunately, and look, and he's going to get perfect shape on the two. I think he took a little bit off of that. I like Danny's chances today, the way things are rolling for him. The other guy's getting some good rolls, too, so it's hard to tell right now. Yeah, both these guys are extreme competitors, and uh, they, they both seem like they play with a lot of heart. I know Mike does, and like I said, it's the first time seeing Danny, and uh, he just like he's sitting there grinding it just like Mike is. That's right. 22.55 miles per hour. Yep, he changed it a little bit. funny sometimes the players will start getting amazing rolls and it just won't stop uh, uh well i saw uh danny's match against uh, mike fuller earlier and um mike got it to the table every game but you know when danny was missing he's kind of getting a few rolls here and there and hooking him a little bit yeah, i didn't but get to see a whole lot of that match i was uh playing a match against uh sydney champion while that was going on and i noticed when i had uh after my match was over and i Walked over, I looked at Danny as he was putting his cues away. He looked a little distraught, and I said, well, what was the score? And he said, 9-3. to three. Well, when he told me that, I knew that he had won because <laughs> uh, uh, Mike uh, goes to 11. But couldn't quite understand uh, what he was disappointed about. Things looking at here about uh, running into that 9 and kicking it over toward the 5. Draw on the ball, it looks like. Uh, draw it off one rail back out to the middle. It's a tough shot right here. Yeah. It's a tough shot to gauge. They're asking you a question out there, Ronnie. Uh, there's a question on here. Uh, is it the quality of the chalk or the type of the tip, uh, what's the most important for holding chalk? Uh, it's probably a little of both. Uh, you got to make sure a lot of times, especially during the summer when the air conditioner is running, sometimes the chalk get a little moisture and kind of cake up a little bit. But uh, you got definitely got to have a good tip too. You got to take care of your tip like we were talking about earlier. And um, I've just always used master chalk, and that seems to be the, be the best that I, I've found. But I'm sure there's plenty of other good ones out there. Uh, Masters is by far the best chalk made. Uh, and you are 100% right there. Uh, holding chalk doesn't necessarily have to do with the chalk or the tip. It's the 
condition that you keep your tip in. And you start to get that uh, you know, rawness to the top of your, to the crown of your tip. Start picking it a little bit. It just starts getting getting a little shiny, what I call a little shiny. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, uh, I don't think players pay enough attention to the, the equipment. Hmm. I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, for instance, uh, police officers, they're required to clean their uh, guns, maintain maintenance. You know, you got to be in here, hey, that's your, uh, that's your tool, your cue. That's your tool that you're working with. Just like a paint gun or anything like that. You have to maintain your tools. Yeah, you do. And it's such a minor part of the game, but it can make a huge difference, huge difference. Oh, man, I've seen people lose so many matches because of miscues. It shouldn't happen. See, he was funny on that shot. He tried to cheat that pocket too much there, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. That's he wasn't. He, didn't, he knew he didn't hit it right as soon as he hit it. Everybody, he, go ahead. I said, he, he should be fine from here. Just, just roll up. And as soon as he pockets this nine ball, it's going to be a five to four in favor of Mike Stobbs. And I'll say it again. I really believe Shannon Dalton may have let somebody in a little under the radar here. And now, granted, Danny Mastermaker has given this man all the opportunities in the world in this match. But I don't know. I'm just not a firm believer in uh, once a person is ranked a certain way, lowering their rank. Yeah, I mean, everybody can – they might step up a game or two and, and have a great game, and then you move him up, and he goes back to his regular game. And, hmm. uh, you know, you just try to get as, as close as you can, and, and it's never going to be perfect. Right. I just – for some reason, you know, I, I do not – once you are ranked a certain rank, and that you can only go up from there, you're only going to improve. You don't get worse. That's a good break there. Plays a one in the side. And he just actually played a cut the, break there, yeah. which uh, – I was discussing that earlier, and uh, putting English on the rack, drawing the cue ball to the side rail and back out. See here if he tries to play this combination or play a safe. Very nice shot. You just bounce up one rail here. Just yeah, roll the outside. ball. Just roll the ball in a little outside. Come up one rail towards the center of the table. Now you want to leave yourself an angle to come back down for the four ball. Oh wow! Whoa! Watch out! I want to tell you what, guys. That ball was rolling dead in the corner pocket and actually rolled out just a hair. That saved him. Yeah, I think it's that outside spin he had on it. But he's got a great angle to get on the floor now. Oh, Ooh. jumped Unless up you do bit. that. And scratched. Wow. He almost got fortunate and didn't scratch, and he would have left him an impossible shot. But And uh, I'm going to answer uh, Warner's question again uh, about uh, how often you should be uh, picking if you play with a hard tip. There's really, you know, no time period or how much you should be doing it. You should just always do you that know, after every – and that, you know, a certain amount of shots, take a look at your tip, you know, make sure it's, you know, not shiny, as uh, Rodney like to refer to it as. Just make sure it's holding chalk well. If you notice that it's not, don't just grab the chalk and start chalking your cue without looking at it. You know, look at how much chalk is on there. And then see how it's holding chalk. You realize it's not holding chalk? It's time to, you know, pick into it a little bit. Um, yeah, it's, I know it's really difficult to be thinking about the tip during play. 
But Especially in the heat of the battle. Yeah, I mean, that's like the last thing on your mind. So do a lot of prep work before you even start the match, maybe. Exactly. About the only time I really pay real close attention to my tip, if I've got a shot where I'm like queuing off the rail, where the balls are up against the rail, uh, or if I've got this... There's I got secret. this tremendous draw stroke, and I'm going to have to put on the ball. I want to make sure that the tip is is holding chalk. So how many uh, break and runs of bar box eight ball you think this guy could run, string together for breakfast? Is he pretty good at bar uh, box eight ball? I could imagine. There's, there's no telling. Uh, you like six, seven, you think? I think he, he could easily... Do a, do a five or six pack, you know, if, if the ball's spread uh, right. How about yourself? You said you play a lot of bar table, don't you? Uh, no, I was kind of forced to when I when uh, I was down uh, in South Carolina because that's about all there was. Uh, I see. Down I see. around the beach, and uh, uh, it just depends. You see you're playing down there with uh, Jared McGee and Greg Dix and those guys. Yes. Hey, uh, they're both great players. In fact, I yes, think – uh, Jared won the tournament last week, actually. And, uh, Conyers, Georgia, bar table nine ball. Uh, great Southern Billiard Tour event. And as soon as Danny pockets this nine ball, our game is going to be tied up at five games each. It'd probably be uh, one of our good friends, uh, Corey Duell. I, I mean, he has no problem breaking running eight racks, seven, eight racks. I've seen him do it several times. That's so hard on bar box eight ball because there's just so much going on, especially, and he does the second ball break. You know, you were mentioning earlier how clustered the bar box eight ball break gets, and to be able to run eight racks just messing around. Well, I mean, you've heard of Corey and the soft break. Corey can break them hard, too, when he wants to. Yes, he can. Absolutely. And he can smash them. And on the bar box, I mean, that's, that's half the battle almost. Yeah, he hits the second ball break. He hits it with a good medium to hard speed, and he can manage to run out. I mean, he, he manages to break balls out. He manages to, you know, take care of the clusters and getting balls off the rails. And he's an awesome eight ball player, as well as a world champion. There goes that cue ball again. Caliber nine ball player, ten ball too. Yep, that cue ball dove to the right into the hole. He, he, adjust, he adjusted to not scratch in the same pocket and adjusted too much and, and went in the opposite pocket. So if you're just joining us, this is the Great Southern Billiard Tour, Fast Eddie's in North Carolina. Goldsboro to be exact. Watching a match with Danny Mastermaker and Mike Stobbs. I'm Alvin with Inside Pool Magazine, along with David King and Rodney Strickland. And yes, he plays like Earl. <laughs> send me the checks. Send me the checks. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he plays safe. He plays safe probably better than Earl. You guys had an awesome match the other night. Who ended up coming out on top on that one? By I think way. David crushed me. <laughs> I made about three mistakes the whole match, and he just crushed me. I remember that. That was a really good match. I'm just not going to comment, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah, if you don't know, we're doing a break speed contest. Now it's in the live stream, of course, not on the YouTube videos, of course, but... For the live stream, anybody that popped into the room tonight and you want to guess on the breaks, if you're within uh, point zero .02, you win a free subscription to Inside Pool Magazine, a top high-quality pool and billiard magazine that you can check out at InsidePoolMag.com and send all your friends and post your Facebook the link to the Ustream at InsidePool.tv. That was a nice shot by and uh, InsidePoolMag.com. I want to thank TheCutShot.com and PoolPlayerExcuses.com for their support for this event, Fast Eddies. Okay, it's 0 
or 0 0.1 mile per hour of the actual brake speed. And you can't go over. Well, Danny hit this one a little hard. Uh, kind of put himself in a predicament here. We're enjoying chatting out there with everybody. Reading your questions and comments. I, I like putting this putting this seven ball, banking it onto the bottom rail here and sending the cue ball back up table. Uh, you might hide him behind a nine. If not, you're just definitely going to leave him a long distance shot where he's going to have to play safe back at you. Absolutely. Uh, Well, this is where things either really start working or they don't. Is he shooting at this ball? Yes, he is. Wow. What a nice shot. See, he wants to take control of the match and go for shots well, like that. That's the way to do it. That'll get it done. That was uh, confidence what Johnny booster. Archer says. Just whack it in there. That's what he says. You come up with a tough shot, what do you do? Just whack it in there. For some players, that's a little more easier uh, said than done, though. For sure. And easy, a little more easier done than said. <laughs> Six games to five now in favor of Danny Mastermaker. So we're back on what I call break now. Get back on break. Just like in tennis, you got to hold your own break in this alternating format. Hold the serve. Oh, you sound like you've been playing pool a long time, Rodney. Uh, I've been playing longer than my ability shows, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I don't know. I saw you make some really great shots the other night, so. They're saying they're getting a world of knowledge from you guys. I'll tell you what, that's misfortunate there. That's This is no time to uh, be scratching on the break, uh, being down 6-5 in the set, going to 9. Man, any close race, you got to make sure you can control that cue ball on the break, even if you got to take something off of it. Wow. Funny little shot on this two ball. Yeah, I'm thinking he's, he's thinking about maybe stunning it Look at off the, the rail and back to the middle. I think he has a real small angle on this ball. I don't think it's as straight in as it looks. It maybe it is. Much. He's queuing up like it's straight in. Yeah, just stop it, go for the harder shot on the three instead of trying to do something fancy. I would have rolled up farther than that, actually, in trying to get a little bit of a He's all Better right angle here. on the ball. Uh, he can go back and forth. Yeah, it's easy to miss this ball. You want to be careful not to get hooked behind the six here if you're going back and forth across the table. Yeah, you got to hit this really pure. And he did. And that's a great shot. And you see what I mean by getting hooked uh, right. behind the six now, a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he could have been right behind that ball. Yep, good point, David. See here, he's he's flirting wow. with it. Got a little bump there. Older guy kind of taught me the game. He says you, you don't want to be playing in traffic, bumping in the balls. No, bumping Try balls. to play them like they lay. <laughs> bumping balls is never good unless you're breaking them out. I like yeah. That was a buddy of mine that used to play a lot of snooker from Canada. Uh, he's the one that taught me that, especially in eight ball. Don't be moving balls unless you have to. Absolutely right. Yeah, for sure in eight ball. I heard the same thing from Troy Frank, one of the better bar box eight ball players out there. He's, one of the, he's a great eight ball player all around on any table. Plays great eight ball. Plays awesome nine ball too. Yes, he does. 
I've winner seen him the, run uh, nine racks and nine ball like it's nothing. Winner of the Derby City Classic nine ball division on in the inaugural year of it. We just watched uh, his cousin Brian Frank win a tournament at Fiddlesticks Billiards Cafe, a bar table eight ball, race to five, race to three on the loser side a couple weeks ago that Earl was at in Galassi. But, uh, yeah, the Franks are good pool players for sure. A yes. shot there by Danny. Excellent Seven shot. games to five. That, uh, scratch on a break by Mike. Uh, Two-game swing there. It definitely cost him. I think the mistake was really earlier in the match when he he went at that combo or something and it's, it's sometimes a mistake from the beginning of the match is, is it plays in your mind a little bit now now Mike's just wanting to get back to the table I know I know Mike he's he like I said he's a grinder and he just wants another chance he wants another chance to get up there and, and try to get at least within one game here Put your brake speeds in. Brake speed. A little unfortunate there. He only see probably a piece of the one, and if he hits the one there, he's on scratch. Yeah, and there's really nowhere to push out to. He's going to have to kind of kick at it, I think. Then even if you kick and make this ball, you're really not going to get a reward because of where the two ball is. Exactly. We're looking at 23.7. 0 0.7 miles per hour. 23.07. It's like he's, he's pushed up here so you can play off the rail, off the short rail here and play the one and get back down the table for the two. Oh, he's looking at kicking. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think it might be too far away from the pocket for him to go. I still like going the other way myself. It may go for sure. These pockets are very accepting of balls. I mean, there you're taking wow. so many chances. If you make it, you hooked. Man, he took a big chance there. And if you come off the bottom rail, you scratch. Sell out. That's why I like playing the short rail. Even if you don't cut it enough, it comes off the rail, gets behind the eight, and the cue ball goes back up table. If this nice little Ford shot. Stop it, that's a great shot. Well, hey, Mike's got his chance. Let's see what he does with it. Might as well uh, go at the ball and use it if you can. Now I believe he's going to play the three ball in the opposite corner pocket at uh, opposite top right hand corner pocket. Uh, you just a little top and very delicate shot here uh, to get shape. Watch out eight. And he has gone right behind it. Wow. And he may have been wanting to hit that ball a little firm to play it in the side. But Looks like he can see it. He's playing safe behind the five. Nice. I don't think he got there, though. No, he missed it. Well, I'm thinking that uh, Danny Mastermaker is pretty happy he's back at the table after. Oh, yeah, he, he kind of do dodged a the bullet there. Yeah, you guys, everybody check out the iPhone app, too, for Inside Pool Magazine. You can watch these on your iPhone. It actually looks really good. Can really see what's going on and hear everything. People watch these matches on trains, on planes. Oh, uh, well, I mean, it's it's great, great little feature there. The mobile devices. I mean, not everybody can be at a computer at all times to be able to watch these matches. Yeah, and they're you know they're paying quite a bit of money a month to have that internet phone, and might as well use it. Get exactly. some enjoyment when you're bored. Well, well Danny had a little shot there, and uh, 
what I call a little stroke tester, the way it was, and uh, it's kind of messed oh, up a little look bit. At that. Well, look, look at this. Wow. Yeah. Mike uh, had a little miscue action there. Yep, just like we were talking about. He's looking at his tip now. He's going and getting into his. I thought he was going to take out his. Yeah, he's looking at his tip right now. He's not going to do anything about it, though. See, and I've miscued again. Well, if, just ignoring it. Yeah, well, he, he miscued, but if he looked at his tip and miscued, and what I'm thinking is it's not the tip. He kind of misstroked it a little bit, maybe. Uh, I see. I see. Yeah, because I've miscued and then just want chalk the cue, and it's still a slick spot on there. Yeah, he he just uh, tried to try for a big stroke there and, yeah, and maybe got a little too low on the ball. Good explanation. For me, I'm not as... Uh, Good of knowledgeable of a player as you are for sure. Give you a little update. I mentioned earlier that Sam Monday was in a little bit of action with uh, Larry Crissell, a little one pocket action. Uh, Sam's actually up two games. I've been playing for about a half hour. And another knowledgeable player was the man whose voice you were just listening to, and that's Dave King here in the uh, booth with me. I do what I can. <laughs> yeah, he'll, he'll just he'll just stop this ball and and just shoot the eight up corner and draw it back for the nine. Nice shot there, just. Just rolled it in, held position. Well, Danny could go to the hill here. Sometimes I say a lot of people try try to do too much with a bridge uh, right. when they really don't have to. I mean, sometimes even if you get a bad shot, even if it's not with the bridge, you got to take your medicine, make the shot, and just take the tough shot the next time. Exactly. Take what the table gives you. I'm a firm believer in uh, walking around, looking at the table, looking at the layout, and that before your shot, especially when you're going to shoot something difficult, uh, gives you your option to know exactly what you can and cannot do. Let you, you look play at it within yourself. Angles. We'll let you play within yourself. And uh, Danny goes to the hill, leads the match uh, eight games to five. With uh, Mike Stobbs break. We're going to roll our commercial real quick. back. Well, Mike didn't use a cut break there. He just went straight on and took a little bit off of it, I think. Just Actually, making sure he didn't scratch. Actually has a shot. Uh, it's not the easiest of shots. Uh, you're going to travel uh, all nine feet. About five feet with the cue ball and four feet with the object ball. See, and this is exactly what I was talking about. He was just trying to take his medicine there, just kind of roll up and make the ball. And unfortunately, I think he might have, get a little hooked by the nine. His uh, break speed was uh, 23.25 miles per hour. You made a valid point there. Uh, Rodney, that was exactly what he should have done. He did it. Uh, just got a little bit of a bad roll. Wow, he did have enough angle. He got real jumpy on that ball, though. Real jumpy. I, he's, tr he's trying to do too much, trying to catch up too quick. Joey Denton has a question out there. Wants to know what's the what is the fastest break uh, we've seen. That would probably be your break, Dave. I don't know if I have capped it at this tournament or not. Uh, Somebody got 30. Was that him? Oh, that was it. 33. And I've seen I've seen Sam do 34 up in Salisbury, Maryland. 
one time. That's getting it done. Cause I know what that. I know what that. You know, <laughs> I know what thirty-two point seven nine feels like to be exact. What? Which? How much? Thirty-two point seven nine. I know what wow. that feels like, and that is all I have. That's it, huh? That's all you got, huh? I'd be curious to know Shannon's. I think I get Shannon to watch this hit here. Made a wow. nice hit. Wow. Oh, he got unfortunate, though. Almost made that ball, too. I think that's probably uh, the way this – the only thing that's funny is the five ball. But I think this could be the end of the match here, Rodney. Yeah, uh, yeah. as, as long as, as long as he don't, like I said, play in traffic here, just stays free and clear, he, he should be fine. Yeah, I believe the highest break, though, of this tournament was 29.99 uh, miles per hour by myself in my last match. I actually controlled the cue ball in that one, too. I was rather surprised. Well, I don't think he want to be quite this straight in here. Yep. Like right, I was want saying, a little more angle. The five ball is the only problem ball in this thing, and he's – now he's just going to have to draw it a little more. To the pocket. Draw it up to the pocket so you can get a full ball hit on it. Just like that. Uh, he, yeah, he got it. As long as you don't, you know, have anything blocking the full hit of the cue ball, I think it should be okay. Blink, rail, rail. Very nice shot. I think this is going to be the match, gentlemen. Straight yes. ends perfect here. Little angle's perfect. You can just roll to the top rail and back down. I don't think he wanted to be. Well, he's all right. A little right spin takes him right over the first diamond past the side pocket. And the thing is, avoiding the side pocket, which he has done nicely. Here and it is, gentlemen. Yeah, with speed and angle. A little snapshot in time here. Go out on a limb and say, uh, Danny's going to win this match. Uh, nine games to five. Uh, don't don't go out on a limb or nothing, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nine gentlemen. To five it is. Danny Mastermaker will take uh, the hot seat. He will await the winner of Mike Stobbs and Mike Fuller, which we will be bringing you uh, here momentarily. So uh, all you viewers out there, stay tuned with us. Uh, I'm David King, uh, along with Alvin Nelson, along with uh, Rodney Strickland. We'll be back with you shortly. Thanks a lot, everybody.